Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop, and today I want to answer a quick question I get a lot about my Shapeoko CNC is how do I control that without using the computer? And especially if my computer's not right next to it, like mine's on the other side of the shop. And that is answered really simply by this remote keyboard. It's a USB keyboard. It is a full keyboard with a touch mouse in there. And that's how I used it. So follow along and I'll show you how I control the CNC with this keyboard. So here's the remote I have. You can see it's got all the regular keyboard layouts. It does have a few extra, these left click mouse button, right click mouse button. It's got your page up and page down over here. This is your arrow keys. These are kind of an extra, uh, the function keys. Um, another extra function keys. And then you have the mouse touchpad essentially right up here. Mine connects via a USB dongle. It's a uh, 2.4 wireless connection. So I'll plug this into my computer in a USB spot. And this will be a second keyboard that works at the exact same time as the keyboard. So let me show you the hotkeys and press the buttons and sh move the machine. So here's the keyboard shortcuts for Carbide 3D. It's Carbide Create and Carbide Motion mixed together. You can notice uh, up on the left here under the Escape, we have Deselects and Return to Current uh, Pane. That's in Carbide Create. When we're working with Carbide Motion, that's the ones we need to look, um, look at. There's Carbide Motion, Carbide Motion, Carbide Motion. That's how we control it when we're not around it. So in Carbide Motion, you can see, here we go, Log Window is uh, the keyboard L. Carbide Motion MIDI Window is the keyboard M. Jog the Z axis is these um, greater than, less than. But really what I like to focus on is the number keypad over here. These are what I use on the keyboard. So it has different speed controls for version 4 and version 3 if you're not using version 4. Make sure you go ahead and update, and you can check out my earlier video of the Ultimate X Carb vs. Shapoko uh, Part 1, and that'll tell you how to do that. But in version 4, you can change the speeds right over here with the corresponding numbers of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also, 1, 2, 3, and 4 over here on the bigger keyboard. And then the minus and plus right here, that will jog the Z axis, also page up, page down. So really that's almost all I use is the how fast am I going and use the keyboard arrows up, down, left, right to move the X and Y and then the page up and page down over uh, to use the Z up and down. First thing we need to do is click on Carbide Motion and it's opened. We turn the power on and we connect to the cutter and we're going to come up here to jog and of course every time we turn it on we need to jog the machine, initialize it. We'll click on Home. Okay, once we're homed, we have to be on this screen to be able to use the keyboard. If we're in Probe, if we're in Jog or Info or Load, any other screen other than the Jog, Jog position, it won't work. So you can see that I can, we can normally click on these and it'll move it around. But let's move the keyboard and I'll show you how we can do that. But make sure, again, to be in the Jog position screen on Carbide Motion to be able to use the keyboard. So at this point, we plugged our USB dongle that we had into our computer's USB port. We didn't have to do anything else. We didn't have to install any driver software. Of course, I'm using Windows 10. And now we have our machine turned on, and it just homed over in the corner. So we're going to take our keyboard. We're going to turn it on up here. And the only keys I use on this are 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's the speeds that will... Um, show you how fast it's going to move. So one is the very slowest, two is next slowest, three is uh, one inch, and then four is fast. So we'll click on four for right now. You can see it lit up and it knows that I just sent that to four. Then I'm going to use these arrow keys up here. That's arrow up, down, left, and right. And I'm going to control the machine. Now let's go ahead and bring it forward and to the left, kind of jogging it closer to us. So I'm going to push down and left on the keyboard. So down. <laughs> holding it down and I let go. If I tap it, it's moving and then left. Now we're moving left. 
So if that's going too fast for you, you can slow it down. We'll hit number three. You can see that now I'm moving it one unit at a time. If that's still too close, we'll hit two. Now I can barely see it move, but you can hear it. And that's how you get a little bit more exact. And then one, it's moving. It's just entirely too slow. It's never useful. So again, and we can move it around, back, forward, forward, left, right. And that's how we'll find our zero. Let's say we want to zero it right on top of this um, bolt. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it all the way forward. We'll move it to the right. And we got pretty close there. Now, in order to move the thing up and down, the Z, we're going to use the page up and page down over here on the corner. So remember, we're on as fast as we can go. So that's going to go up. Holding it will go down. I like to go into three or two mode. Click on three. Slows it down. Now I can get pretty close. Two, I can go even smaller and get it perfectly zeroed in. And that's it. That is how I control this uh, when I'm not in front of the computer because my computer is way over on the other side. Allows me to zero it. And that is the controller. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to buy this. It's on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Comes in multiple colors and it works really well. So. That's the quick tip on how to control your CNC when you're not in front of your computer for less than 20 bucks. Hope this video helped you to figure out how to use this USB keyboard and control your CNC when you're not in front of it. I'm going to leave links in the description down below where you can find this and anything else I've used in the past. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or concerns, I make sure to answer every single one of them. So click right here and here to see some of my past videos and click right here to subscribe. I appreciate it and we'll see you next time.